Today's video is sponsored by KEH Camera. I think of myself as primarily a black and white photographer. I've shot literally thousands of photos with black and white film, so they weren't photos that were shot in color and then converted to black and white. I shot all of these photos with black and white in mind. I think this practice alone has really helped me figure out how to see in black and white. Being able to pre-visualize a scene in black and white can really increase the number of photos that you see or don't see while you're out with your camera. Partnering with KEH Camera has been really great for my channel just because they've given me like complete creative freedom on how we work together. So they basically just asked, what are some videos that you're working on or that you'd like to work on and how can we be of help? How can we enhance the video or just help make a certain video happen? So I mentioned wanting to make a video all about shooting black and white with intention and they offered to loan me this Leica M Monochrome Type 246 uh, specifically because this is a black and white only camera and I've carried this for the last couple of weeks specifically for this video. So all of the photos that you're going to see in this video today have been made with the 246 monochrome with a 35mm f2 Summicron. Um, I'm not here to review the camera, we're not going to do that because uh, there's no need. This video is all about the craft of shooting black and white. Uh, if you want to know a little bit more about the camera itself and what KEH has to offer, stick around to the end of the video, but the focus of this video is not about the camera itself, it's just about seeing in black and white, so let's get right into that. My absolute favorite thing about shooting black and white is how it can just strip everything down to the core of what I look for in photography. The color is not there to distract. And color is an incredibly powerful tool with photography when used intentionally. I think color can really enhance just the overall mood and feeling of a photo, but it's not always used intentionally, especially for how certain people like to shoot, like myself. This isn't to say that color is inherently bad or distracting, because again, you can use it really well, but for me, how I like to shoot and what I like to shoot, I'm photographing everyday life, and if I'm just walking around with my camera looking for photos, so much of that color is just left to chance. And with as much as I have going on in my life, uh, the last thing I need is something that I have little control of. You know, I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old, so uh, I have plenty of chaos as it is to work with. So when I go out to shoot black and white photos, I'm so much more focused on the things that are not left to chance, things that are always going to be there no matter what day it is or where I'm at. Things like light and composition and how I'm layering things and how certain elements in the frame line up and especially things just like moment and emotion. Those elements are always there, whether you have good light or bad light or dim light or bright light, you can always rely on the light that's there and it's not going to be dictated by the color and the light itself isn't going to shift the color at all because you don't have that there to begin with. So you have light and this frame, these four sides of your photograph, and I'm focusing entirely on just the tonality within that frame. I'm not relying on, you know, a pretty sunset or the rusted paint job on a vintage car. I'm so much more focused on just the depth of the photo and really trying to make it feel like the viewer can step into the photo and really feel it at the simplest form. And you can't simply just take any photo at all and then just convert it to black and white and call it a day because not every photo is going to translate as well when it's black and white. Without that color to clearly define and separate things in the photo, you really have to be conscious of how you're layering things and what's behind your subject or a specific part of the frame. If you lose that definition, things can get messy really, really quickly. Working with negative space and placing a certain subject or a certain part of the element you know, in front of that that negative space so it stands out more, that's going to make a world of difference in how the viewer actually sees the photo and what they can actually pull from the photo because things can get lost so easily. One thing I really like to do when composing and thinking about black and white while I'm doing that is just thinking about adding as much contrast as I possibly can. Like if I'm looking at the file, whether it be a film scan or a digital file, pulling that into Lightroom and just dragging that contrast slider all the way up to 100 pushing it far past what I would ever do in a final image that I would print or share, but doing that really simplifies the overall composition and it really kind of makes things clear as to what is going to stand out. And more importantly, what's going to be lost in the photo as a result of that. Is my subject or a key part of that photo going to be completely lost? If so, then I'm going to need to recompose and layer things better so that my subject or whatever that key part of the frame is, it's not lost because of whatever is behind it, you know, and, and the light on 
on that specific subject and your background, those kind of things are really going to dictate how much that stands out in the photo or how much it's just going to be completely lost. And that's not to say that you need really high contrast light to make a black and white photo work because you can do the same kind of thing with flat and kind of dim light. I mean, I happen to like really contrasty light, but you can work with really soft and flat light and that works really well for black and white photos, especially for portraits as well, because you're not worried so much about, you know, shadow detail and if it goes too dark and losing that information, you can make really, really strong black and white photos in really dim and soft light as well. On the same hand, you can use use really high contrast for portraits and even silhouetting your subject. I think that's one of my favorite ways to use really high contrast light in a kind of portrait setting because it really simplifies things. I can silhouette them and really just strip things down to just black and white. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do when I'm shooting those kind of portraits. There are so many different ways to photograph intentionally with black and white in mind, but I think that in itself is the key. You have to be intentional knowing what the final image is going to look like before you actually make it. You can't just rely on the edit because I think so much of it really does come down to the composition and that's going to happen with the camera in your hand, not in post. And if you're using a camera like the monochrome or you're shooting black and white film, you really have to be intentional because there's no other way around it. You're working with that black and white frame and that's it. I hope this was helpful and kind of got you thinking about shooting black and white and how you approach it. It's obviously something very near and dear to my heart considering I mostly do shoot black and white. So I'm excited to hear what you guys think about this and any of your own approaches that you might have in the comments down below. Huge thank you to KEH Camera for loaning me the Monochrome Type 246. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to shoot with this camera. This is actually the first time I've ever used any of Leica's M Monochrome cameras, but it was a natural fit just because coming from my M6 and even my M262 that I had years ago. Uh, this is very similar to that camera. It's a monochrome from the 240 era, not the M10 era, which is the current era of uh, digital M's at least. And even being several years old, this thing is just incredible. I was really, really surprised once I pulled the files into Lightroom. I mean, they barely took any post-processing at all. Uh, just looking at the photos on the back of the screen as I was out shooting, I was really, really surprised what it looked like just straight out of camera. If you're interested in the camera itself. Uh, by the time this video goes up, it will be back in KEH's hands. So if you're interested in checking it out, I'll put a link for this down below. KEH camera is definitely my most trusted place to buy used gear. Uh, they really take any stress or hesitation that you might have about buying on certain auction sites or private Facebook groups, that kind of thing. Uh, they take away a lot of that guesswork and worry and that alone just kind of sells itself. They have really high standards when it comes to rating the condition of the used gear and they have an incredible warranty system as well so it takes away all of that stress and their customer service team is just incredible to work with. They not only sell used gear, but they also buy gear as well. So if you have some old cameras you haven't used in a while, or maybe you want to upgrade your camera for a new one that's coming out, you can do that directly through their website and even get a quote as well. But they have a whole program all about buying gear that we're going to dive into more in depth in a video next month. So make sure you're subscribed and keep an eye out for that one. But more than anything, I appreciate you guys watching this video. I think this is the third video this week, so it has been a busy one, but that is it for today. So thank you guys for everything. I love you, and I'll see you next time.